almost all of us pretty much know about the very real threat of identity theft. We wish we didn't. But what many of us probably don't realize is just how much of a worldwide problem it's become, not just here in the U.S. There is an international network of thieves who use the Internet to conspire and spend our money. Yeah, but there is one man using the net to fight back and give the bad guys a taste of their own medicine. Here's Daniel Seberg. It's a sting operation to track down identity thieves. Dan Clements of CardCops.com shows us the bait. What we've done is we've built a fake website called GamerDiscounts.com in hopes of luring the hackers here. For five years, Dan has been a fly on the wall in underground chat rooms, virtual black markets where hackers sell what they steal, your personal profiles and credit card numbers. Dan monitors these rooms and gives the information to authorities. He makes his living by selling lists of stolen cards to merchants and consumers to fight fraud. Dan's latest plan is to design a fake retail site and trick the hackers into making purchases with stolen card numbers. Then he wants to trace the thieves. We're actually going fishing here for the hackers. We're creating an environment where they can come and put in their freshly hacked credit cards and we can track them. We see where they're coming from and then when we ship boxes we're going to track them. Hackers break into computer systems both online and at brick and mortar stores and steal credit card numbers. Then they look for places to spend your money. Online merchants who don't ask a lot of questions. Websites that will sell you anything without matching your name to your credit card. Dan is setting up a fake site that fits the profile and it looks like a real retailer. GamerDiscounts.com comes complete with products and prices and even company job postings. We come down here, we have a job, an actual gaming job for an engineer, so it looks like it's real. And it even has a help desk number. Hi, you've reached Gamer Discounts. We're sorry we can't take your call right now. With his fake site up and running, Dan says it's time to go fishing for ID thieves. To do that, team member Mike assumes a covert identity in the chat rooms, a trusted nickname, which we can't show you. We're going to say things like, uh, this site, Gamer Discounts, is easy to card, they have low security, limited security, um, very easy to uh, order things, it's easy to switch bait and switch the address on them. He chats in hacker lingo, often riddled with abbreviations and misspellings. The whole point, remember, is to convince hackers that it's safe to use their stolen credit card numbers to order merchandise from Dan's fake website. Then it's wait and see if anyone takes the bait. 24 hours later, Dan checks the net to see what he's caught. It's a global assortment. Germany, Romania, Romania, Morocco, Indonesia, and Australia. So we have people from all over the world. It's 32 countries came to this site since last night. What does that tell you exactly? It tells us that, um, you know, Americans are suffering identity theft at the hands of people from international countries. And the only way that these people could have known about the site is through the chat room. Yes, we started letting the chat room know that um, Gamer Discounts was online last night. So the only activity is international activity, and these are bad, bad people. A man claiming to be David Rome places an order for $1,200 worth of computer equipment to be shipped all the way to Indonesia. The problem is, David lives in Massachusetts. We are going to call this uh, person that an order was placed at Gamer Discounts. His name is David, and we're going to call him and inform him that we've got his credit card on our website. I received a phone call, and as a result of that, I thought that he was trying to commit some sort of fraud or was phony. The real David Rome in Massachusetts didn't know someone in Indonesia was trying to order goods with his stolen credit card number. He's understandably suspicious of Dan's message, but a little research confirms Dan's credentials, and David is thrilled that someone out there is trying to catch a thief. The cyber fraud that's out there is so new and so pervasive that to be able to set something up whereby you could snare people uh, is very important today. We talked to Scott Nelson, a consultant and former FBI agent, about the growing problem of identity theft. Well, the challenge is huge because the victim could be in L.A. County or Omaha, Nebraska, uh, the so-called perp, the perpetrator, the subject uh, could be in Morocco. And that means to catch that guy, it requires cooperation through a number of different agencies, so it's very difficult. I also asked Scott how identity theft investigations are coordinated. There's no lead agency. It depends on the type of crime. For example, if it's an identity theft that comes out of a mailbox, and that's a possibility, uh, the postal inspectors would be the lead agency. Secret Service gets involved in it. The FBI does. There's jurisdictional agreements, but really no lead agency. 
Jurisdictional issues aside, Dan is on a mission to track down at least one thief all by himself and hopes to send a message to him that he can be caught. Dan doesn't fill the order to Indonesia. It would be difficult to trace all the way there. But he decides to ship to another thief here in the States. It's an order for two PlayStations, $350 worth of merchandise, placed on GamerDiscounts.com with another stolen card. The first item he sends out is a cell phone, the bonus gift that was promised on the Gamer Discount site. But there's a twist. We have a GPS tracking cell phone, which will track this order and will show us the movements of where this order goes. So once the thief opens the box, he's going to see the GPS phone and he will be tracked. With the first package on its way, we can track the phone's whereabouts online. The box arrives at this medical building in Dallas and ends up near this busy intersection of a residential neighborhood across town. But Dan and his team can't bust down doors, even though they may have discovered where the suspect lives, but they do turn over evidence to authorities. So far, however, we don't know if any action has been taken against Dan's suspect. Even though Dan can't slap on the cuffs, our story isn't over just yet. He ships a second package to the same alleged credit card thief in Dallas. It's supposed to be the two PlayStations purchased with a stolen card. But instead... We're packing the box, and we're going to ship this box to Dallas today on one of these fraudulent orders. And in the box, we're going to put Catch Me If You Can, which is a little bit of a goon for the thieves to let them know that e-commerce is coming. We also have a book, uh, the Best Identity Theft book, written by Bob Sullivan. We're going to put that in there. So it's kind of a message for the hackers that, hey, we're not going to stand for this. It's kind of a shot over the bow that e-commerce is not going to put up with this stuff anymore, that we're coming, we're fighting back. Mission accomplished, sort of. A poke in the eye for at least one identity thief and a bit of satisfaction that at least one plot by one hacker was foiled. Be on the way. I'll be there Monday. All right. Daniel Seberg, CNN, Los Angeles. Now, there are many ways which ID thieves can really find your information online, among them by hacking into a database, planting a virus on your computer, or by setting up a phony website.